everyone, I'm Jen, and we are so excited that you're joining us today. We have just a few announcements, so check out what's going on here at Life Springs Church. If you or someone in your family is graduating from high school or college, we want to celebrate with the graduate blessing on June 3rd at the 7 p.m. service and June 6th at the 9 a.m. and 11.30 a.m. services. Be sure to come out to receive a prayer of blessing. We also want to give them a gift, so scan the QR code here or click the graphic below to register for a gift. This summer, our kids' ministry is hosting the Press Play Summer Camp. Mark your calendars for June 21st through the 26th and here's the breakdown for all the ages. Preschool camp will be June 21st through the 23rd, 9 a.m. to 11.30 a.m. Our elementary age camp will be June 24th through the 26th, 9 a.m. to 2.15 p.m. And we will wrap up everything with a family fun night on June 26th at 5 p.m. Be sure to go ahead and sign your kids up for a fun, memorable week, learning that they can have confidence because of Jesus. You can register them by scanning this QR code or by clicking the graphic below. Don't wait. And speaking of kids, you may not know, but Life Springs Church has a partnership with a children's home in Kenya called the Shalom Watoto's Home of Hope in Kenya. We are looking for a few more sponsors to support an orphan. So scan the QR code or click the graphic below to register to be a sponsor. If you have never been through the growth track, now is the perfect time to sign up. Grow Track helps you learn more about Life Springs Church, get connected, and learn your next steps, and even find lifelong friends. Sign up for the next Grow Track by scanning the QR code or clicking on the graphic below. Check out the devotion called The Table. It's an excellent daily devotion with a monthly theme to help you know what to read and to help you grow. This month, we are studying wisdom. Anybody ever need more of that in your life? Scan the QR code or click on the graphic below to download a devotion guide. Well, that's all for this week. Thanks again for joining us, and we'll see you soon.
I'm Jen and welcome to Life Springs Online. We are so excited that you chose to worship with us today. In fact, if you haven't done so already, we want to get to know you and where you're tuning in from. So send Pastor Jonathan an email at jonathan at lifesprings.online so that we can get connected. Speaking of getting connected, we have a few things that you can text to get plugged in. If this is your first time, please take a moment and text the word GUEST to the number on the screen so that we can connect with you and give you a free gift. If you want to stay up to date on all the things going on at Life Springs Church, text 411 to the number on the screen and you'll see everything going on at Life Springs Church. If you would, take a moment and share this broadcast. And don't forget to like and subscribe on all of our social media platforms. Well, we've got a great service in store for you today, and we want you to get ready to worship God. So for those of you with kids, go ahead and get them ready for their own service by heading over to lifesprings.online for a virtual kids service right on the homepage. Make sure that they grow spiritually too. And for you, maybe take a quick moment and pray for God to remove distractions and prepare your heart. And now... Here's Pastor Jonathan with some information on giving. Hey, thank you so much. And we are so excited that you decided to tune in today. We're going to get into the message and to the service in just a minute. But before we do, let me tell you just a minute about giving. And if this is your first time tuning in to Life Springs Online, please do not give. We did not ask you to come for your money. But if you are a part of Life Springs Online, this is a way for you to give back to God for all that He's done for you. The Bible talks about how where order is restored, blessings are released. And we say that a lot around here. So I encourage you to get your finances in order so God's blessings will be released on your life. Now there's a lot of ways that you can give. Uh, so if you go to lifesprings.online slash giving, you'll see all the ways that you can, whether it be online, mobile, mailing in a check, whatever is most convenient for you. Now, I want to pray for you as we get into the service. So let's pray. God. I thank you so much for all that you're doing in the lives of everyone tuning in today. I believe that there's no accidents and that everyone who's watching today, it has an appointment with you. So I pray that you would bless them during this service. And I pray that you would bless this offering and let it be used for your kingdom here on earth as it is in heaven. And we're going to thank you and we're going to praise you in Jesus name. Amen. Hey, thanks so much. Can't wait to see you soon. We're about to tune in to worship. Go ahead, get yourself pumped up, maybe even stand, and let's make wherever you are a place of worship so that you can hear from God. This is what living looks 
life. This is what freedom feels like. This is what heaven sounds like. We praise you, we praise you. This is what living looks like. This is what freedom feels like. This is what heaven sounds like. We praise you, we praise you. This is what living looks like. This is what freedom feels like. This is what heaven sounds like. We praise you, we praise you. This is what living looks like. This is what freedom feels like. This is what heaven sounds like. We praise you, we praise. We'll see you break down every wall. We'll watch the giants fall. Fear cannot survive when we praise you. The God of breakthroughs on our side. Forever lift him high. With all creation cry, God, we praise you. We'll see you break down every wall. We'll watch the giant fall. Fear cannot survive when we praise you. The God of breakthroughs on our side. Forever lift him high. With all creation.
not seen somebody this past week, I talked to a friend of mine, that, uh, a dear friend of mine, I hadn't talked to him in years really, and we reconnected, and I told my wife, I said, I forgot how much I loved him, Just he just fun to be with, I just love being with him, I forgot how much, y'all remember when COVID happened and you couldn't come back to church, right, we were shut down, and then we got back here, and it was like water from a well, y'all know what I'm talking about, right, it was like, I forgot how much I love being with the people of God worshiping, you see, some of you have not worshiped in a long time. I want to invite you right now. You've got an awesome God. Come on. How holy, how precious, how awesome is He? How about if we just took this time right now and just said, God, we're here to worship you right now. What if we just took this time right here and said, God, I have missed you. I've longed. I don't know about you, but for me, I've had a lot of distractions this week. Anybody like that other than me? And I'll be honest, I hadn't been focusing on God, and I'll go ahead and tell you the honest truth right now. Let me just go ahead and tell you. I'm, I'm the pastor of this church. But we were a song or two in before I ever even got really connected. My mind was not even in this room right here. Now don't judge me. How many of you have been there? Hold your hand up good night. How about if all of us right now, how many of you give me an amen if you believe God's in this room right now? How about if all of us, how about if all of us just focused our mind right now? Close your eyes. What if all of us, maybe you've not been walking with the Lord for a while. Maybe you just worship God every day of your life. Maybe you hadn't felt His presence since last week you were here. I don't know where you are, but how disconnected or how connected you are, it doesn't matter. Let's all right now focus on God. I want you to picture Him right now high and lifted up. I want you to picture Him when He went to the cross for you. I want you to picture Him when He sat on the grassy knoll and had kids, and He said, don't let the kids stay away from me. I want you to picture him walking across the water, headed in the deep, calming the sea and calming the disciples' fear. I want you to picture him when he lifted up that lady who was caught in adultery and he said, go and sin no more. I want you to picture him right now when he reached out his hand and healed a blind beggar. I want you to picture him right now and the way he's been with you when you thought there was going to be no way and he made a way. When it looked like there was no hope and he brought hope. It looked like there couldn't be a change, and he brought a change. Come on, lift your hands, lift your voices right now. You're in awesome God. Come on, sing it. Come on, let's get in this moment right now. Get it. Such an awesome Such God. An awesome God. 
Hallelujah. So mighty. I feel God in so this So holy. So wonderful. Such an awesome God. Pour your heart so out to him. Whatever's been going on this week, pour your heart so out to him. I'm singing it to this. One more time, I promise. Awesome God, so mighty. Come on. So hard. You've been so good. So wonderful. Such an awesome God. So selfless. So generous. So place. I feel him right now. I hope that you're wherever you are right now online or wherever you may be on this property, whatever. I hope you'll just tune in. Let me just tell you, you're not going to get what you need from God until you give him full control of your mind. And when you do, the Holy Spirit takes control. Father, move in this place right now. You deserve every bit of it. We cannot overdo it in our praise and worship. Thank you. Thank you, Lord. You're a King of kings and Lord of lords and God most high. Thank you, Lord. Maybe you're in this place and you don't know Jesus Christ as Lord and Savior. Would you just say, God, I'm sorry for my sins. From this day forward, I'll serve you to the day I die. Maybe you feel like you backslid. You used to be close with God, but you've strayed. Would you just say, God, I'm back. I'm back. Father, use this right now, this worship of your glory. We can, I tell you, come on, somebody. Amen. This is true for you. You can live a week off of good praise and worship. Come on. You can live a week off of that. Thank you, Lord. You can feast off that. Help us right now, Lord, to bask in your love. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. So holy. Thank you, God. Text prayer, but it's seat back in front of you. It's a prayer card. Go ahead and get it out right now. I want you to get it out while the Holy Spirit's moving in this place. If you made any commitments to God, I want you to check that box. Give me whatever information on the front you want to give me. Maybe it's just your name, maybe it's your phone number, whatever you trust me with. I promise I'm not going to stalk you. I just want to connect with you. That's it. But on the back of that card, here's what I want you to do. You can write a praise, a prayer request if you got one. I mean, I do that every week. But let's just do something. Give me a praise report. How many of you will fill out a card and give me a praise report? Can you do that? If can I hear an amen right now? If you can do that. How many of you have got at least one thing to write and to praise God for? Can I hear an amen right now? How many of you can amen that God's been better to you than you've been to yourself? Can I hear an amen right now? If God's been better to you than you've been to yourself, let me hear you right now. You may never stand on a stage and give a testimony, but you can give a testimony right here on that prayer card. Give me a testimony of the goodness of God in your life. Can I hear an amen? Amen, amen. How many look at the person beside of you and say, I am glad for moments like that. Go ahead and do that right now. I am glad for moments like that. Amen. Amen. You can be seated. We're so glad you're here. Amen. Thank you so much for being here. Thank you for being a part of this. And again, for those of you watching online, make sure you send me a text to 919-586-8900 and text prayer and let me know what you're praising God about. We get a lot of prayer requests at the church. A lot of people call us and they need to pray for this and the bottom's falling out of their life. But how many of you know there's more good than bad going on? Come on, right? And, and I think if there's ever been a time we need some good news, it is today. Day. Can I hear an amen on that? And so I want you right now to let me know about it so I can cover you in prayer and we can, we can do this 
together. I want to say hello to everybody in here. This is a broadcast auditorium, but we recognize that this church is much larger than the people that are in this room. We have about four services at this campus, and then we have the lounge, we have the party room, got people worshiping outside. We got another campus over at Western Hornet High School that has a live preacher. We're praying for them. We got the bridge service that happens uh, right now on Saturday, moving to Sunday on June the 6th, and we're excited about that for young adults. And we got a large online audience. Every week I go look at YouTube, and it's somewhere between 150, 200 that have viewed it on some level. Come on, say hello to our church family no matter where you're tuning in from. Get loud right now. Glad you're here. In fact, let me just give a praise report. Most churches I know of are struggling. They're trying to get people to come back after COVID, and they're, they've been hovering around anywhere from 35 to 50%. And I did the math today in my head, say in his head. That's going to be a problem. Come on, somebody, right? I did it in my head, and if I understand it correctly, if I'm thinking right, we're somewhere around 75 to 80% of the people coming back right now. Let's celebrate that right now. Amen. Amen. Now, here's the reason we're clapping. Now, for those of you at home, don't feel like they're clapping because I'm not there. No, 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 no. We get it. Everybody's story's different, every, and you need to stay home if, you're, if that's where you are. You need to watch online if you're staying home and you ain't watching online. Yeah, for shame, for shame, for shame, all right? But for those of you that are part and watching online, you're part of this church family, don't you ever feel guilty or anything like that? But here's what I'm realizing is that a lot of you are online and a lot of you are coming back. And so watch this. Come on, somebody. I need an amen right here. Watch this. We've actually grown through COVID because if everybody that watched came back, we would be well over where we were pre-COVID. Can we celebrate that right now? I'm excited to be in a growing church. Amen. Amen. Glad you're here, uh, and we're glad you're part of this service today. If you want to follow along with my sermon, go ahead and text right now. Text 919-586-8900. Text sermon. You'll get the sermon notes right there. You can follow along. Now, I will say this. I'm, I feel like I ought to say this more often. If you're watching this on demand on uh, YouTube or something, the only the sermon that that week is the one you're going to get. So if you're watching this three or four weeks later, you need to know what you're going to get. All right? Let me just tell you that. But this is for only this week right here in real time. If you're watching it this weekend, uh, then, then we're glad that you're watching watching it text sermon and you can follow along because and it, here's where you're in a series called ready one two three called you've got mail and what we're doing is we're going through the mail the, uh, the letters that the apostle paul wrote to the churches so this is for christians if you're not a christian and you don't know jesus christ as lord and savior let me just be clear this is uh, this is this message is for christians but it hopefully will motivate you to want to be a christian and why you should give your life to jesus christ we're going through this summer some of the letters that paul wrote the apostle paul wrote most of the new testament all the way from romans all the way to hebrews uh he wrote those books of the bible and and or, we don't know if he wrote Hebrews, but he certainly had something to do with it um, if, he, if he didn't write it himself. And so we're looking at those letters because we believe the Bible is just as relevant today as it's ever been. Amen. Yeah, four or five of you agree with that. I hope I'm getting some likes and some something online right now that, that we're doing that. So we're going through and we're starting in the book of Ephesians. And um, the book of Ephesians is a letter. In fact, all of his writings are letters. And so if somebody wrote you a letter, you wouldn't read, you know, two thirds down and go back and read a third down and then go back and read the end and then go read the beginning. You would read it from top to bottom. And so I encourage you to read this letter this way. It has verses and book uh, chapters, the Bible does, but that was added by man after the letter. And the reason is so we could say to you, like turn to chapter 3, verse 10 or whatever, so that we could study the scriptures together. But when Paul wrote it, it didn't have chapters and verses. It was a letter. And just like anybody who wrote you an email would have, you would start at the beginning and go to the end. And so if you've not been catching up with if you've not done chapters 1 and chapters 2, go back to um, uh, Life Spring Church's YouTube page or lifesprings.online and look at these sermons, they're on demand, and catch up because I don't want you just to get to the center and pull out certain parts. That's how you get in trouble, right? If you don't get Bible in context, it messes you up. Can I hear an amen, right? Like, you know, you know anyway, I could give a lot of examples on that, but we're not going to go there because sometimes I have trouble well, y'all have trouble. Y'all listen too slow. That's really a problem this whole church has. And so I'm wanting to speed you up, and I want to make sure I'm getting through this. Because we've already done, we, guess what we did the week one of this series? We did chapter, anybody want to guess? One. Some of you here, you cheated. Last week we did chapter, so that means today we're going to do chapter three. And guess what we're going to do next week? Yes, yeah, so it's hard for some of you, I know. And then after that we're going to do what? Chapter Five. Now, just let me ask you, let me call you out. How many of you have done your homework? You read chapter three before coming to church. All right, look, hold it up, hold it up. Be proud. That's right. Now, uh, the people who didn't, 
for shame, for shame, for shame. No, I'm just kidding. But you can follow along and you can be a part of it. And I encourage you to do that as we go through this series. Now, this is a six-part series because guess how many chapters Ephesians has? Some of you are brilliant. Six, that's right. And so it has six chapters. It's kind of got two sections. The first three chapters, chapters one, two, and three, are about what we believe. And then chapters four, five, and six are about how we behave. And so this week, we're winding down chapter three, and we're ending the part about what we believe. And now we're going to get into how we behave. Look at the person beside of you and say, you better behave. Yeah, you better go... Yeah, I see a little girl right here. Tell, tell your daddy, he better behave right there. Tell him, Lex, you better behave. You need to, this is, this is your time, and the preacher told you to do it. You need to do that, right? Yeah, so, so we're going to talk about that, uh, and, and we're going we're to talk about how to behave. Now, again, if you're not a Christian, this is written to Christians, but you ought to be a Christian, and this is a reason to do that. Here's what we're going to learn today. Ready? Here's what we're going to learn. This is our life spring search social media moment. A lot of times I put a, a statement up here, but, man, this verse just really just resonated with me. I'm going to bring it back home to the verse later on, and I just wanted to post because I think this is a good message to get out there on social media, wherever you want to put it, TikTok, uh, Twitter, LinkedIn. <laughs> Any LinkedIn people? Come on, let me see you. Yeah, right, two of you. There you go, right? Yeah, there you go. Here we go. May you experience, say experience. Experience, experience the love of Christ, though it is not, it, though it is too great to understand fully. May you experience, say experience, experience. because see, hearing about it is one thing, experiencing it is a different thing, right? When you're in a, so anybody ever gone to something and said, I want to get the total experience, right? Like you can, so, like you can go, let me tell you what no one's ever done. No one has ever rode down the road and think, I want a really, like I want a, I want a good dining experience. I want to have like a, I want to just have a really good dining experience. I want a really, really good hamburger. Let's go to McDonald's. Okay. <laughs> Said no one ever, right? Come on, right? Because why? They don't focus on the experience. They're just focusing on getting them things out. And you know what? You're going to get a burger, and it's going to make you fat. And if you don't believe it, this is what it looks like, right? But you're going to get that burger, but it's not going to be. A di- but now you go to these other restaurants. Who's ever been to a restaurant? Like one of them Japanese restaurants where they're cooking on the table. Who's ever gone to one of those, right? Now, that's an experience. Come on, right? That's something you, I mean, it don't even matter what the food is. The show was worth it by itself, right? It's just, I mean, that's why they charge you $455 a plate. But nevertheless, it's the experience. It's the ambiance, right? You can watch a a ball game on TV, but it ain't like being at the ball game, right? You've learned that from watching online, even the ones that are watching online. Because I hear this all the time. Say, like, we appreciate the online. Thank God for technology. Thank God you get to hear the sermons. But who's ever watched a Life Springs Church, like, sermon and service, and then who's ever been to one and would raise your hand and say, it ain't nothing like being there. Can I? Yeah. See, that's what I thought because there's a power of being in the room and having the what? The See, you can hear about it, but you don't know. You don't know what it's like to be at the beach and get sand in places that rub you raw. Come on, somebody, right? You've got to experience some things in life, right? You've got to experience rejection to really know what it's like. You've got to be there and experience to be able to do it. And, and, and you try to live vicariously. Some of you have never been able to do anything, so you try to live vicariously through other people. You say, that's why you're on Facebook, trying to live their dream, right? I'm telling you, the pictures are not the way it is. Their family is not as perfect as they're making it sound. And you're trying to live vicariously through them, but I'm telling you, they're just toe up from the flow up just like you are. In fact, they smack their kids 14 times to get them to pose for that picture, right? And if you can see the other part of their house, it looks like they've never cleaned it. Let me just. And I like these churches that take pictures of like a crowd. It's the, everybody's bunched up on three rows, and it looks like the place is full. Come on, somebody, right? It's all stage. You're living vicariously because you don't know. But you got to have the what? The experience so let me get into it here today today we're going to get into chapter three today chapter three is finishing the first half of what we believe and now we're going to shift over to how we behave and let me review for those that hadn't watched or been a part of ephesians one and two and he's talked about what we 
are what we have in Christ Jesus. He's given us some possessions. Come on, right? He talked about who we are in Christ, that he raised us from death to life. Can I get an amen in the house of the Lord? And then we talked about, he talked about rather, what God's doing with this now. He's changed us. He's building us, flawed people, of those of us who are imperfect, into his temple. How many of you are glad to be a part of that? Can I hear an amen? amen. Now, chapter 4. Chapter 4 is going to be about the practical side. But today we're doing chapter 3. Right before he gets into chapter 4, he's thinking about what God's given us, what he's done for us, what he's building us. And he decides, before he moves into chapter 4, he decides to pause and pray. Second prayer, first prayer was in Ephesians chapter 1. The second prayer is going to be in Ephesians chapter 3. He's going to pray his second prayer. And then, and, but before he prays, he's going to tell us about his calling and what God's called him to do. Because I want you to know something, in case you don't know this, everybody in this place, you have a unique calling. Amen. I was hoping for a stronger amen, but I got one. You've got a unique calling. Can I hear an amen, right? Yeah. God's got a purpose and a plan for your life that is specific. And he's telling what his is. So here's where he's going to start the whole series. I'm just going to outline it. There's three basic sections here. Um, technically two, but I've decided to make it three. Three sections in this outline. First thing he's going to talk about is his ministry. He has a very special calling. He's going to, his calling is to take the gospel to the Gentiles, which is everybody who's not a Jew. So how many of you are Jewish? Raise your hand. How many of you are, 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 are not Jewish? Raise your hand. Then you are a Gentile. Look at the person beside of you and say, do it like this. Say, what's up, Gentile? Do it like this. Go ahead and do it right now. Yeah. It makes you feel better. Like we're part of the Gentiles. We're part of that group. So we're all Gentiles. Everybody that's not a Jew is a Gentile. And Paul has a keen understanding that God wants the gospel to get, and this is what you're going to see all through his writings, all through his life, that God wants the gospel to get outside of just being a Jewish thing, and it's not just Judeo-Christian values. He wants the gospel to go to everybody. Say everybody. everybody. So here's the deal about God's family. This is, listen to me. I'm pausing because I want you to listen to me. Here's the deal about God's family. God's family is inclusive, not exclusive. Ah. Now, you may have gone to a church that is exclusive, but they're wrong. The family of God is for everybody. Red, the yellow, black, and the white, they're all precious in his sight. Here's what he's going to say. He's going to say, first of all, he's going to say, here's my ministry. First of all, I need you to understand something. I'm a prisoner. You see, Paul is really a prisoner when he writes this uh, gospel, or I mean, excuse me, this letter, but he's connecting his imprisonment to his calling, and he's saying that the real chains that have bound me, the only reason I'm in prison now is because I am bound by the love of God. I am committed to my calling, and they can lock me up, they can beat me, they can hang me upside down, but I'm not leaving my calling. I'm staying, I'm, I'm in prison to what God's called me to do. Come on, somebody, right? Now, here's what he says about it. He says, he starts the letter, and he says, when I think of all this, say this, what he's talking about, and again, this is why you need to have listened to one and two, he's talking about what he just ended in chapter two with, because remember, it won't written in chapter and verses. What he's saying is, when I think about all the stuff I was just telling you about in chapter two, so let me tell you what he's talking about, to remind those that were here last week, or to tell those who've not heard. What he's saying is, when I think about the fact that God removed the wall of hostility between the races... When I think about the fact that now there's no more animosity between Jews and Gentiles, but the wall of hostility has come down and there should be peace in the family of God, that God has taken us all through the cross. And you may have come red, yellow, black, and white, but we all walk through the cross and we all come out clean with the crimson blood of Jesus. And we all come out with the blood of Jesus covering our sins. And now God is building us into a temple, the temple of God, with a lot of flawed people. When I think about that, I, Paul, a prisoner of Christ Jesus, for the benefit of you Gentiles, he's saying, listen, I, I'm, I'm telling you, this is why I've been locked up, assuming, by the way, that you know that God gave me the special responsibility of extending his grace to the Gentiles. This is a a pattern for him. If you read the book of Acts, you'll see him all the way through Acts. You see the Apostle Paul saying that he's passionate about it. The gospel is going to go to the Gentiles. In fact, I don't have time to tell you all about it. But one time in the book of Acts, he got so passionate, he went to the Jerusalem council and argued it. And watch this. He said, Peter withstood me to my face. You want me to tell you what that means? That means they were toe-to-toe -to -toe yelling at each other. They were mad, right? And he got a letter and he won today and all this. He was willing. He had devoted his life 
to breaking down racial tensions. Boy, that's powerful. Can I hear an amen? Because he said the gospel is for who? It's going to the Gentiles. So he says, I want you to understand something. This is my calling. I'm a prisoner. But I want you to also understand God's got a plan. And I'm going to communicate the plan to you. Paul had a special revelation of what he's going to call a mysterious plan. Say mysterious. How many of you have felt like God's plans are mysterious? Can I? Yeah. He said God's got a mysterious plan. And the plan that's mysterious is to build the church out of two groups of people, Jews and Gentiles. And Gentiles, remember, is everybody who's not Jewish. Here's, here's what he said. He said, as I briefly wrote earlier, God himself revealed his what? His mysterious plan to me. I want you to know, God has revealed his mysterious plan to me. The whole idea of the church, for those that don't know, church means citizenship, okay? It was not a religious word. It was a word like saying, um, we're going to build a... When, when God said, I'm going to build a church, what he meant, what he was saying to them and their culture was, I'm going to build a citizenship. That would be like, the, a church would be anybody wealthy enough to vote in that town. So what he says, watch this, this is what he said, I'm going to build a whole separate kingdom. And you're going to be, and I'm going to call my citizens the church. Come on, y'all tracking with me? That was what blew everybody away. It's the citizenship of a new kingdom that God is building. It caught everybody by surprise. They thought he was just going to be like continuing on what he was doing in the Old Testament, part two, just favoring the Jewish people and anybody who wanted to keep their rules could come into the Jewish faith. That is not at all what he was going to do. He said, as you read what I have written, you will understand my insight into this plan regarding Christ. Skip it down. And this is God's plan, in case you don't understand it, this is God's plan both Gentiles and Jews who believe the good news. Say, believe the good news. Believe the good news. It's not, when I say it's for everybody, it's for everybody who's willing to believe the good news. If you're not willing to believe Jesus is the only way, it's not for you. Come on, somebody. Right? Y'all tracking? This is for everybody who's going to believe the good news. They share what? Equal. Say it again. They share? Equal. You're talking about equal rights. Here it is right here. They share equally in the, riches in, in the riches inherited by God's children. Now, let me tell you what this word means. That word right there, equally, is, is literally mean joint heirs. Fellow heirs is what it means. It means that it's like, if, like God didn't just adopt us into his family, but then just give his inheritance to his biological children. Once we were adopted into the family of God, we have full rights as children of God, and now we are joint heirs. Come on, right? And this is the thing, ready? That the way we get in is not by our bloodline, it's not by being Jewish, but it's by believing the good news. And he's going to go further with it. He says both the Jews and the Gentiles are part of the what? The there is no reason, there's no reason for us to be separated and segregated because we're all part of the what? The same body and both enjoy the promise of blessing because they belong to Christ Jesus. Listen to this. Let me tell you what this means. This means that we are all members of the joint body. It's a brand new body. It is not a Jewish body. Listen, this is this is very it is not a Jewish body that we got grafted into, and, and we got it. It is a new thing. What God is doing right now in 2021, what God has been doing since he died and resurrected, it's a new thing. Say a new thing. And God says the new thing that he's doing is all because of Jesus Christ. The way you get into the family of God is not circumcision. It's not by obeying the Ten Commandments. It's not by coming to church and paying your tithes. It's not by keeping nursery. Although God really has a special place in his heart for those of you who keep nursery. The way you get in is belonging to Jesus Christ. That's how you get in. That's the only way to get into the family of God. It's all about Jesus and he goes on he says by God's grace and mighty power I have been given the privilege of serving say privilege of serving privilege of serving him by spreading this good news it is a privilege to serve God now I know some of you whenever a preacher starts talking about you need to tell people about Jesus and invite them to church and da, 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 you feel bondage and you feel stress and you don't want to do it that is a lie from the enemy it is a privilege for you to go to somebody 
and give them the message of Jesus Christ. Now, I know some of you don't feel comfortable articulating it because you don't know enough about the Bible, but you can at least invite them to church. And why would you feel ashamed of that? Listen, if you had the cure for cancer and didn't tell the world, we ought to lock you up in jail. Amen. Right? right? Let me just tell you, hell is a lot worse than cancer. And we've got the cure for hell. Why would you not share that? We ought to lock you up. We're not, but we ought to. Right? Am I right? Come on. Can I, right? Amen. See, the mystery, it, it's a privilege. Say privilege. Amen. Privilege to be able to serve God. Privilege to, 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 to be in kids' church and teach the gospel. It's a privilege to be a group leader. It's a privilege to hand out a bulletin. David said, I'd rather be a doorkeeper in the house of God than the king of many nations. It's a privilege. Say privilege. Amen. It's a privilege to be on the team of God. If you're not serving, why aren't you serving? You need to get a part of the team and start serving because it is a privilege that's been afforded, afforded to you. The mystery he states clearly is that Jews and Gentiles are going to come together in one body. And listen, it's that, that was something he was keen aware of. That was his calling. And it gradually dawned on the new church, it, on the early church. Read it. But, but here's the deal. It's going to grow until every tribe and every nation hears the gospel of Jesus Christ. And then he's coming back to get his church, his citizenship out of this world. So Paul says, here's my ministry. I'm a prisoner. That's God's plan, and let me tell you what God's purpose is. See, it's sad because there's so many churches right now that are just barely surviving, and they're not thriving, and the reason is because they got a whole bunch of ministries going on, but they're ministering aimlessly in this world. They're not ministering with on purpose. They're not ministering on target because they don't understand the purpose of God in this age and this dispensation and what he's doing right here. So here's what he said. He said, this is what he said. He said, God's purpose is all, in all of this is to use the church. That's not an institution or organization. That is anybody who has citizenship in heaven. Anybody here believe your name's written in the Lamb's Book of Life? Let me see you. Then his job, his purpose is to use you. Everybody just raise your hand that believes your name's written in the Lamb's Book of Life. To use you to display his wisdom in its in, it, in, in its rich variety to all the unsee rulers and authorities of the heavenly places. This was his eternal plan. It was not an afterthought, okay? It was his eternal plan. That means, that, that means it was before time. It means it is outside. It's not affected by time. It was his eternal plan which he carried out through Christ Jesus, our Lord. In other words, the church was not just like, oh, Let's come up with a church. He came up with that idea from the very beginning. When, you, when he was on the cross, you were on his mind. You're not an accident. You're not an afterthought. You're his part of his plan. Say, I'm, I, I'm planned. Say it. Come on, a little louder. Say, I'm planned. I'm planned. Because of Christ and our faith in him, we can now come boldly and confidently. Say those two words with me. Boldly and confidently. A little louder. Boldly and confidently. Where? Into God's presence. You don't have to stand outside any longer. You don't feel good enough? Neither do I. You don't feel worthy enough? Neither do I. You don't feel like you should be there? Neither did Moses. He said, he said I'm a man of unclean lips. And he said, he'd take off his sandals because he's on holy ground. Isaiah, same way, all the way through. Nobody feels worthy enough, but thank God. God, say thank God. What a great privilege that we can come boldly with liberty of speech and assurance that he's going to hear and answer prayers. Paul says the plan is this, for all of us to come through the cross and become one body. He said in the chapter 2, one temple, remember that? We all come through the cross to come one body, one temple. And then he said, I'm going to give you my spirit my spirit, the whole, we are the temple of the Holy Spirit. And then you're going to tell this good news to a lost and dying world. And then God's going to shine through us and he's going to build the church. Who wants to be a part of that? Hold your hand up, right? This is the bottom line. We are one body. This church is one body. Now we have many locations. We have many services. Hopefully we're going to build a building and not to have to have as many, but I don't ever think we'll be down to Somebody said, when we build a building, we're going to be at one service. I don't think we'll ever be at one because our vision is too big for one service. I don't think we're going to ever be at one location because our vision is too big for one location. 
We're going to be in downtown, and we're going to be in Western Harney, and we're going to be in wherever else God sends us, Pittsburgh, Aberboro. I don't know where we're going, Fuquay, but we are going to keep on until he comes to get us. Because here's the truth. God saved us, and then, in fact, one of my heart desires right now is thinking of ways we can help churches that aren't growing. How can we help them get growing? How can we pour fertilizer on their church? Because I want everybody, if God wants everybody in the kingdom, I better want everybody in the kingdom. And it ain't about our church, it's about the kingdom of God. Let me talk to you, church, for just a second. Don't ever stop preaching the gospel. We're in a day when everybody right now, I said all over Facebook, and they're doomsayers. Things are bad right now. Can I get an amen? Amen. They're bad in a lot of ways, morally bad. I know economically we might be good, and we might be good in a lot of ways, but morally things are not good right now in this nation. But don't you, I, I felt this last couple of weeks, I felt the Holy Spirit quicken in my heart and say, you need to quit saying that. Everybody already knows that. They don't need me to tell them it's bad. Anybody that just, unless you just crawled out from under a rock today, you already know it's bad and morally in this nation. Can I hear an amen on that, right? Amen. So what does the world need? They need hope. Let's preach the good news. Let's don't preach the bad news. Let's don't preach the doomsayer news. Let's give hope to a hopeless group. Let's preach the gospel. Let's preach the good news. Let's be positive. And let's tell everybody they don't have to go to hell when they die. Let's tell everybody there's forgiveness because of the cross. Let's tell everybody that God's got a purpose for them. Let's tell everybody that it don't matter what you've done, he'll forgive you. Let's tell everybody that God's way is the best way. Let's tell everybody that he's coming back to get us and this world's not our home. Let's tell everybody that you can have your name written in the Lamb's Book of Life. Let's tell everybody that we can see him face to face one day. Let's tell everybody that whatever you go through on earth will be as bad as it's ever going to get for a Christian. But, as, but if you're not a Christian, this is as good as it ever gets gets let's tell everybody there's hope in jesus christ don't lose focus but let's build his church because we're building his church and not a social club okay if you've not if you've not been a part of it you need to get to be a part. if you've been watching just sermons listening amen and, and that's is all you're doing you need to get connected part of believing is belonging you need, to, you need to join a platoon. This is a platoon. You need to get in part. If, if you've not done that right now, I want you to sign up for Growth Track. Get your phone out. Go ahead and get your phone out. If you've not done this, and I want you to scan right here this little code, and I want you to go and find out where you can serve, find out how to get part of a group. Go ahead and sign up right now. I see your phones. I'm going to stall just a minute, and I'll, I'll just tell you a little story about something, or I'll tap dance or something, so you can do it right now. I, I think it's going to work for even those of you that are watching online. We'll, we'll, you sign well, I'm not going to go physically. Just put that on the thing. We'll try to find out an a, a, a online way for you to do that. Go ahead and scan it right now and get signed up because you need to be a part of the platoon. All right, y'all ready to look at this prayer? If you're ready, say ready. ready. What did he pray? How did he end it? Here's how he prayed. Chapter outline. Part one was Paul's calling. Chapter two is Paul's prayer. Let's look at his prayer. This is what he's getting ready to pray. This is the second prayer. Ephesians 1, 15 through uh, 23 was the first prayer. That was a, these complement each other, by the way. The first prayer was a prayer of enlightenment. The second one is going to be a prayer of enablement. How many of you want God to give you strength and enable you? Anybody need the strength of God right now in your life? Listen to this prayer. This is good news. This is going to help you. Paul ends the, this first half of the letter talking about believing he's talking about a prayer and I want he said I want you to learn everything there is to learn about Jesus and then I want you to live what you have learned so here's the prayer ready Ephesians he says when I think of all this I fail I fall to my knees and pray to the father this is listen I fall to my knees say I fall to my knees that's a spiritual posture. I know you may think that's a spiritual weakness like if you're a military man or you're in a fight but in the spiritual world this is a posture of power. A man is no stronger than he is, than he is in his prayer life. Because a man on his knees talking to God, and guess what he's doing? Prayer can do anything God can do. What can God do? Anything and everything. So the bottom line is, when you're on your knees, and listen, if you're unwilling to humble yourself and get on your knees and talk to God, it's okay, you will one day. One day, every knee will bow. Every tongue will confess. Some people do it now willingly. Some of you will do it when you're made to do it. But either way, everybody will be in this spiritual position. You might as well get there now. He says, listen, I'm, I, and pray to the Father. The creator of everything in heaven and on earth, I pray that, say I pray that, I pray that. 
He's going to tell us what he prays. Ready? He prays that, number one, that we will have what? Because that's what happens when you're on your knees in prayer. You get power. Here's what he said. He said, I want you to have power. I pray that from his glorious unlimited resources, he will empower you with inner strength through his spirit. How many of you want some inner strength? How many of you want the Spirit of God in you? I want you to wake up every day this week and say, God, fill me with your Holy Spirit. Baptize me with your Holy Spirit. I want to walk in the Spirit of Jesus Christ. I want inner strength. Say inner strength. And that's not going to come from a self-help book. That's going to come from the Spirit of God. He's going to pray second of all, not only that you have power, but he's going to pray that that, that you're going to have Jesus in you, in us. Here's what he said. He said, then Christ will make his home in your hearts as you trust in him. Other versions say that he will fill it home in your heart. Can I ask you a question? Have you ever wondered if God fills at home in your heart? I would imagine that everybody who claims to have Jesus in their heart, Jesus don't feel at home in their heart. Have you ever asked yourself the question, is my heart a comfortable home for Jesus? Is that a good question? It's a good question to have. So what heart is he looking for? He's praying also that we have deep spiritual roots. He's praying that our roots would go down deep in him. Here's what he says. He said that not deep spiritual roots. He says your roots will grow down into God's love and keep you what? He said your roots are going to go down. Listen, I, God's going to feel at home in the heart that has deep roots of faith and love. This suggests steady position. This, steady, this suggests a habit of love and of faith. This is like a tree that is planted by the water and said, I will not be moved. I don't care what culture does. I don't care what the news say, says. I don't care what it is. I am going to let this thing go. I will not move. I will not shift from here to there. I'm not in and out. I'm not hot and cold. I'm a believer in Jesus Christ. And my roots go down deep. I'm tired of so many Christians being tumbleweed Christians. Y'all know what I'm talking about. There's no roots and they blow from here to there and you can't keep them in church. You can't keep them on the straight there. And there's a lot of people who are trying to get spiritual fruit in their life without being rooted in spiritual things. You've got to get rooted in the things of God. If you're going to live in the fullness of God. Is that right? Okay, here we go. He's praying for us. He's praying, God, let them have power. Who wants power? God, let them have Jesus in us. Who wants Jesus in us? God, let them have a deep spiritual roots. Who wants deep spiritual roots? He's praying right here, God, that we would help them to understand. Help them to understand. Here's what he says. He says, and may you have power to understand. May you have the power to understand, as all God's people should, how wide, how long, how high, how deep his love is for us. You see, you know what he says? To understand, it means to apprehend. It means to take hold of. God's love, he says God's love is boundless, is high, how deep, is endless, it is unfathomable, it is immeasurable. God's love reaches to the depth of sin and to the height of infinity. God's love passes all knowledge and wisdom. God's love, listen, is measured by Jesus dying on the cross. God's love is measured by the Holy Spirit taking up residence in us and transforming us through the measure of his love it's the power of the holy spirit working in us several years ago melissa and i um i did a wedding for a family in our church who has happens to be my group leader and her and her husband decided to get married in cancun and so they took us to cancun now i don't do many weddings much the more our church has gotten so large but if you do it in cancun Y'all understand what I'm saying, right? Don't even say anything. They took us to Cancun, so we got to do that wedding, and, and this was right here at the resort, and that's, uh, that's me. It, it was several years ago. I had a little more hair then, and uh, that's my beautiful hot wife, and we're standing there, and, and, and this is the infinity pool, and uh, it was awesome, and it's, it's like they got married right there, at, right there under that gazebo, and I stood right there with them, and I mean, she looked all right, but y'all should have seen me. I was looking good that day, right? I mean, I'll be, I'm being honest. I, I felt like I took more away from the bride, honestly. I'm being, just trying to keep it real with you, and, and this, is, this is the infinity pool, and you can walk down these steps and be in that 
pool. And listen, it don't give it just because right over there, it, it's like that is the biggest pool I've ever seen. I know. But it's got a waterfall, and that's the ocean. And it is right there, and it's the ocean that is there. And so you can roll out of the pool, and the jacuzzi's over here, and go right. It was great. And they had like buffets all day long every day. <laughs> Changed my life in the name of Jesus, right? Now, listen, I'm telling you, this was an incredible place, and we swam, and we stayed there for a few days. It was awesome. And listen, I can stand here, and I can keep on describing it. And it was warm, and they had people going by and handing you fruit and drinks. It was the, I can describe it all day long. I can tell you how wide this pool was, how deep this pool was. I can tell you how long this pool was. But you're not going to get it unless you go there and put your feet in the water and get into the pool. You see, here's the deal. I can't describe it with words because it's too great to describe. You're going to have to experience it. And the Apostle Paul said, when it comes to the love of God, I can't paint you a picture big enough with the words. I can't tell you how wide God's love is. I can't tell you how great his love is. You got to get in. You got to come on in and swim. And some of you, for years, you've been coming to church and watching other people worship God. You've been coming to church for years and spying on them and doing it, but you've never got it. You know why you've never got it? Because you've never jumped in. I want to tell you about God's love. I want to explain to you God's love. I want to tell you how awesome it is to worship God and have the joy of the Lord. But I don't have the words. Del Sauls don't have the words. I don't have the words. Apostle Paul didn't have the words. You've got to experience it. Who understands what I'm saying right now? And that's the last thing that Paul prayed for you. Is that he says, listen, I pray that you're going to have a personal experience with God. That you're gonna, it's not that it's gonna be real for you. And I think this is a great place for us just to pray that. That you're gonna have a personal experience with God. May you what? Come on, a little louder. May you may you experience the love of Christ. See, I got saved when I was eight years old, but I didn't really experience the love of Christ. I didn't have my grace experience until I was in my 20s. And when I did, it was a game changer. Man, I hope you get that. May you experience the love of Christ, though it's too great to understand fully. Then you will be able, you will be made complete with all the fullness of life and power that comes from God. God's ultimate purpose for our lives is that we live in the experience of God. Why would you live as a pauper when God has given you his fullness? An empty life is a disappointing and dangerous life. God says, I want you to have a full life and have it to the full. I pray that for you. I hope you experience it. Okay, he ends it, last part of this prayer. He's going to give some praise. I want you to receive. This is the benediction to the prayer. This is the closing section of it. Come on, would you stand with me right now? Everybody in this place, let's close this letter out right here, these first sections. Before we move to the practical, let's close it out with this prayer, with this praise. Here's what he says. Now all glory to God, who is what? Who is? See, let me just tell you something. My God is able. I don't always know if he will, but I always know he's able. I don't always know what his plan is, but his, will, his ability is never in question. Whatever you got going on in your life, God is what? Now all glory to God who is able through his mighty power at work within us to accomplish infinitely more than we might ask or think. Glory to him. Say it with me. Glory to him in the church and in Christ Jesus through all generations forever and ever. Amen. Give him a hand clap of praise right now. We worship you, Father. You know what he says? He says, God works in us. God works through us. God is glorified in us. And all to the wonderful salvation we have in Jesus Christ. There is no reason for us to be down in the dumps. Because we will be seated with Christ in glory. How many of you want to be seated with him in glory? 
Come on, right now, lift both hands if you feel comfortable and say, God, we praise your name. We worship you. You're the King of kings and Lord of lords. Sing it to him right now. Oh, praise the name of God. Oh, praise the name of our Lord and Savior right now. Let's give him praise and experience his love. Experience who he is. Come straight in and worship the Lord. Oh, praise the name of the Lord our God. Come on, everybody in this place. Oh, praise His name forevermore. For endless days we will sing Your praise. Oh, Lord. Come on, sing it again oh, to Him right now. Come on, lift your hand, lift your voices right now. Come on, I want you to experience it. God, help everybody in this place to experience the love of God. Everybody online, praise his name. Put your hands together right now. We worship you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you guys so much for watching with us. We hope you heard from God today. Don't forget to text 411 to stay up to date on all that's happening at Life Springs Church. And again, if this is your first time, don't forget to text guests so that we can give you a free gift. And don't forget to like, subscribe, and share, and text this number here if you make any commitments to God, need prayer, or if you're ready for your next step. And we'll see you again next week.